I don't rate Gakpo as well. Because for me, okay, he was him and Frank De Jong were maybe the best players for the Netherlands. But the issue is, if your manager wants him, it's because he's trying to fit into a system. And the thing is that there's a thing called tick, trust in Klopp. This guy going to Liverpool now and under Klopp, I'm like, because Klopp is known for taking players from here to here. So if Klopp says, no, I want this player. And even if I don't raise Gagpo now, I see there's a potential to be something. Gagpo could now suddenly be like a huge player because if he's now really helped Salah in the whole goal scoring outfit, this whole top four things now gets very, very complicated. Hence why I said like January is going to be a crazy, crazy window because again, if Gagpo somehow hits the ground running and so forth, then Liverpool are now a massive threat again. You know, so it's like um, you have to basically, basically the, the moral of the story is you must always support your manager. If your manager says, no, I want this player because this player fits my team. You have to say, okay, he, he may be a fruit seller and so forth. He wants the player. I'm going to put everything and, and support because you have to. It's like ultimate team. You need all those green bars. Okay, you need all those green bars to freaking connect on the whole ultimate team thing. And that's how, and that's why for United, I think it's a big, big faux pas in not getting Gakpo. So I, I hear you on that. But Jerry, you've, you've signed Gakpo essentially. I think the medical has been done. How far do you think that's going to move the needle? Is that is that it now? Will that get you back into the top four? Or are you still worried? You played well the other day against Villa, but you still hemorrhage those chances. Like, what else needs to happen? You're on mute. Mute, you're on mute, <clears throat> mute, mute, you're on muted, you're muted. Mm. <laughs> My bad. No, um, the midfield for me. Like, yeah, Gakpo's... Uh, as, as a foot, neutral football fan, you love it when forwards come to your club, right? It's just... It's exciting. They're the ones that get the goals. If they pop off, if they bang, it's wild. Do you know I mean, you've got a star in the making. Um, I hear what Have Hope said about, do you know I mean, Klopp taking players from here to here. But that's not what we need right now. If you look at, he plays off the left. I he's, only played he's only played on the right twice. So he's not going to be back up to Salah or he's not going to even rotate with Salah. As a striker, has he got the minerals to do that? I haven't seen that as of yet. He plays on the left. Nunes his best Nunes his best performances have come off the left. When Jota and Diaz come back in, they all play on the left. Bobby's scoring the most goals at Liverpool at the moment. We've got about seven in the Prem. So we bought another left-sided forward for a position that we didn't really need. And goal scoring hasn't been an issue this season. It's been defensively and it's been in the midfield. So unless Liverpool go out now, and obviously January is still early, unless Liverpool go out for me and get a couple of midfielders that go and take us to that next level, make us, uh, do you know I mean, more defensively solid, we control games a bit better, then I don't think it moves the needle that much. Like, whether you win, like, unless you're looking at goal difference, whether you win 2 nil or 3 nil, it doesn't matter. We're conceding too many goals and too many chances with the way that we're playing. How does that rectify that? I don't see that. No, no, but, but, but I think, no, I, 100%, like, even Liverpool fans that I've spoken to, it's like, there are other areas to strengthen and so forth, because obviously, you know, guys like Henderson and so forth, they're on the way out. But I think that there really still hasn't been a Sadio Mane re re replacement. I still think Nunes doesn't pass the eye test. Yeah, he's contributing and and so forth, but I think, like, De Bruyne, he's, a, he's an industry plant, because I don't know how the, he got the man of the match award in the last game. But my thing, though, is what Gagpo does is... I still think there's still a lot of attention on Salah and a lot of pressure on Salah to either get the goals or help to provide other guys for the goals. What Gagpo does is, because remember, you may say he'll be playing on the left or Klopp come and say, you know what, I think this guy can be a bit in the centre in Overton. I can't think I can play on this guy on the right. So don't kind of underestimate He's inside forward, ability. Though, He's so inside forward. It, he suits their system. No but, how, no, but I hear what you're saying, but our issue hasn't been scoring goals. I agree everything that you're saying about Nunes, 100%. I agree. Gatko could come in and he could fit in and he could be the best sign and the best thing since sliced bread. No, 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 but, but because still gets guys in January. So, but, so, but no, no, you see, no, you're no, saying no, as if like this is going to be the only sign Liverpool make. No, but knowing how Liverpool move, like just, like, I mean, historically, we don't go, we, we bought Verge as the only signing in January as of recent, as of recent years that's popped off in January. Other January signings haven't worked out, whether they've been your Miniminos, whether they've been whoever. Do you know what I mean? They just haven't fit the billing. Now, I'm not putting Gakpo into that category. But what I'm saying is Liverpool need a midfielder. In, in, Amrabat. In the summer. You need Amrabat. Whoever, in the summer, in the summer, we went and signed Arthur Mello on loan because we needed a midfielder that desperately. We decided to wait around, 
Klopp came out talking about Morton being the best thing. Wow, we can play number eight now. He's not a six. He doesn't end up playing. Elliot's now become our starter. We've, we've been in for a midfielder for how long? Talks of a certain midfielder. I don't even want to mention his name. But we need a midfielder. It's not we defensively we're conceding too many chances. So unless Klopp's trying to run it back and just say, you know what, we're just going to go and try outscore everyone and have so many options off the bench, which of course is great. Like I'm looking at it from a kind of just a logical standpoint. Defensively, we're poor. We're conceding too many chances. And our midfield isn't dynamic enough to do what Klopp wants them to do. So you either get the midfielders in first or you're just going to suffer the same fate for the rest of the season. It doesn't make sense. Would you get rid of, Fabi- would you get rid- would you get rid of Fabinho? Because he just looks out of place now, man. I'll be honest. Yeah, I mean, if if there's a better solution out there, hundred percent, he's not he's been not been up to par. And any of those midfielders, including Thiago, for me at the moment, is not playing really great. No, no, and I, not- I, I, I think that the issue is that maybe Klopp is still trying to find a better solution because I think the issue for Liverpool is the amount of protection that Henderson gave that defense and how hard that's made for the work to really help defending. Henderson's legs are now gone, and so for the Antiago, that's not really his forte. So I think because the issue is you, the, those you have to see whether those players are out there. And if those players are not out there, you've got to do something. <laughs> so I think that it's maybe a case of like, we're trying to find that player for the right price. And maybe we're either still searching or that player doesn't exist. And if that player doesn't exist in this window, you've got to do something because the next best thing is, okay, let's just try and outscore people till the summer because we, we can't find the guy in, in January. So the worst thing is, okay, we can't find the guy and we, and we do nothing. Best to do something like, the only alternative, if you can't find that guy to help protect Van Van Dyke and Konate and so forth, is let's get another scoring option. Let's do the best we can defensively, but let's not say we need to we need to get two, three, four goals in each of these games until so because this is the best thing we can do until the summer to we find the replacement. You know, I, would, I would agree with that if I believe this signing was what Casemiro is to United, where you can guarantee, wow, this guy's gonna he's gonna do the business. It's, it, we don't know. We don't know. This is someone that's got a lot of potential. I'm not. I'm not that convinced. I'm not on the train. I think yeah, he's okay. I think he's okay. I mean, it's for the price that you're paying. I mean, yeah. Why not? You can, you can get him. in. he's got his own form at the moment. Is he of that level? No. Is he? Is he the Haaland signing? Is he a De Bruyne signing? You're like, oh, okay. Now he's going to change the dynamic of your team. No, he's not. Does he even start in this Liverpool team? That's the question Liverpool fans are having right now. Does he start? Let alone. Let alone. Does he go and make that impact? So, f- for me, I think there's other issues that need to be addressed. And the problem that Liverpool are going to have now is, yeah, your attack looks great, but you're conceding chances. We- we're going to go and fit and um, fix the midfield in the summer now. And then next season, we're going to be talking about the defence again because Matip's gotten older. You're going to get a midfielder, though, man. You're going to get a midfielder, 100%. You had money left over from the summer, man. You're going to well, spend... Well, you, you, it's easy. I, I said it's been heavily linked. They've been heavily linked even before with Amrabat, their DM that can play centre mid. And I guarantee you're going to end up signing him because even Serie A fans highly rate this man differently and he's only costing 30 million, 35 million. I, mean, I, I rate him since the first game in the World Cup. I didn't watch him. Yeah, he's before. different. I thought I thought they were talking about his brother. When I thought that was his brother that was playing for Watford. Like, he's old. I was like, I'm <laughs> a lot of Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I thought it's that one. So, yeah, he's looked great. But I've spoken to Fiorentina fans also that have said he's poor. And yeah, I don't JJ, JJ, I can I can I vouch for that because I remember when Tottenham wanted him last January. Everyone was he rejected. He rejected you, Jay. He didn't reject yeah. him. No, no, Tottenham he rejected, rejected him. He turned him down. But they no, said he's a bomb. Having said that, having said that, mid- sorry, Terry, you can sign a midfield. You can sign a midfielder based on what he's done in the World Cup, and that's what we've seen to have done with Gakpo. But I can like we've done that with El Hajj Duf, and how did that work out? Like World Cup, World yeah. Cup. Man's rolling it back. But that's why. I agree, and, and that's where the Enzo signing is different because if you've watched the Champions League this year, what Enzo's been doing in the Champions League with Benfica has been absolutely excellent. The Amrabat one's interesting, though, because you could look the other way. When Liverpool signed Benton, Kerr and Kulisevsky, not sorry, Liverpool, Tottenham, it was seen as you're buying average Juve rejects and they've looked really good. So horses for courses and all of that. But it-